All right, all right, all right. We are back. And again, in case you missed it, we are running a bit behind. We're running about 30 minutes behind here. But don't worry, you're going to get your full 45 minutes of jam-packed SEO content in the next 45 minutes. And following that, we're going to have our final presentation of the day on iGaming Influencer Traffic Case Study, Transforming Content Creators into Successful iGaming Affiliates. So make sure you stick around for that. Without further ado, let's bring the true rock stars to the stage, the SEO rock stars. They're ready to go, rearing to go, and they were all partying at the white party last night. So they'll be fully aware and alert, I'm sure. Okay, first and foremost, let's introduce to the stage Roman, co-founder of Digital Mint. <laughs> Next up, Alex, co-founder of Smart Sites. All the way from New Jersey. Good. Next up, number three, we got Tamara, head of SEO at Bazoom Group. Wow, Ben David right there. All right, all right. Next up, we got Philippa, CMO of Unic SEO. And next up, we got all the way from India. You might have seen him at the white party last night. He's the CEO of DigiX, Gitandra. Yeah. Last but not least, coming all the way from Quebec, Canada, Francois Baudry, CEO and president of VIA Communications. All right. Okay, we can start with, see the thing about this panel, it's a little bit differently, because the other panels had very custom questions for everybody, but everybody here is an SEO. So there are gonna be SEO related questions. We're gonna start with this one here, talking about Google penalties. Does Google penalize AI generated content and what does the shift from EAT to EEAT mean for such content? Francois, we'll start with you. Maybe define EEAT to begin with. So, um, yeah, so if you guys are doing SEO, you're probably familiar with the EAT concept. So, you know, expertise, trustworthiness, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go straight to one thing. Does AI penalize? Uh, is AI content is penalized by Google? The short answer is any generic content that doesn't add any value whatsoever is penalized by Google. So, if you look at the type of content that ChatGPT, for example, generate normally, it will be quite generic. It doesn't really add any value. So what I'm always telling people is, no, AI content is not penalized in itself, but it is penalized just by the way it you know, generates the content. So just keeping in mind, ChatGPT is not here to replace your copywriters. It's not here to take the job of anybody. It's a tool. So not using ChatGPT, I had a pretty good conversation with Dennis Yu, for those who know this from Lens Matrix. So if you if your copywriters don't want to use ChatGPT, fire them. It's like not wanting to use a computer. But if you use ChatGPT 100% without reviewing the content, adapting the content so it meets the deep concept, well, you're going to be failing for sure. Yeah, G GPT, we gave it to our copywriters to use as a superpower. We didn't fire our copywriters. We said, use this, and then you can churn out a ton more content. Talking on the topic of, of AI and how you guys have, as, as SEOs have embraced it over the course of the last six months or one year. Maybe we'll go down the line and how you, each of you have utilized AI content. AI content, I believe, is, is pretty much helpful. Like, as long as you make it nice, like you make it readable, like so many of, like of the sites I've seen, like affiliate sites, especially, they don't have a nice content. Like, the uh, UX and UI, the content structure is not well designed. So, I would say, like, please, if you use AI content, make sure it's human readable and you have a like human interference in that. Like, make sure like your copy writers are making good job like with the help of chat GPT. And if you want to use 100% AI content, so you, you can use on Parasite site. Like Parasite SEO. How many of you guys have heard about the Parasite SEO? Okay, I got few people in the room. So Black Friday is coming up right now, right? So you can spam the shit off. Uh, like out of LinkedIn, Medium, Reddit, Quora, it's ranking very high on Google. Even if you use 100% AI content, these sites already have a trust in the eyes of Google. And Google is giving the priority. In 2024, it's all about like, 
like like all the updates I've seen, they are like spamming the shit out of these like high authority sites and then like LinkedIn Pulse, Medium, Reddit for. So if you want to use 100 percent AI content, okay, these sites, so you they can work around. So you, you can make a work around with that. But if you work, like having your own niche websites, make sure the content is readable, like you you have the proper SEO structure there. So follow this, uh, like this will be very helpful for you. In my case, I'd like to say that I have nothing against AI content, and for me, it's all the same as the content created by one of our copywriters. At the end, it's the research you do before the content and how much you put into it. So, if you're just gonna ask uh, an AI to to write a content piece and you just give him a topic, everyone is doing that. So, you're gonna get exactly the same content on 500 pages, and of course, Google is not gonna like that. It's all the same. It's repeated. It's copy paste and it will all look the same, which is what you mentioned on the panel before. So the goal here is that the prompts you give to the AI tool already have some research that you already did. You know the market, you know the product, you know what you're talking about, and you also did some skyscraper technique, you already look at other pieces, you try to bring the best of everything you've read, you can send that to the AI tool, and then you do the same as you would do with the normal piece. Get an editor, you get a person to review that, to edit, and make sure it has nothing wrong on it, that everything makes sense, and that will do what Google wants, which is give uh, the best answer to the user search. At the end, that's what they want. They don't care if it's AI or not, so there's no such thing as penalization for AI content. You just need to make sure the content is correct. Yeah. Yes, so um, as of today, 90% uh, of um, spam content, or what we uh, think of as a spam, is um, related to AI, unfortunately, because of the mistreatment of AI and um, task production. But I have to remind that Google never officially um, discouraged uh, use of AI. Uh, and if you look at the Google search guidance uh, from 2023, uh, they actually say that it's a good thing to automate content because it's been used uh, since uh, rank rain and uh, so there is a, Google never said AI content is bad. Uh, it's us that is making it bad. So uh, we have to be more careful and uh, do it in a more ethical way. So um, yeah, it's safe, but just uh, do it smart. So very good point. Uh, Google's official guidance was that they will continue to reward quality content regardless of how it's created. And when all of this started coming out, that was our original guidance from the February 2023. When all of this came out, I did not think that was going to be a case. Because Google for, no, for sure knows content that's AI generated. They, for those that, that remember, they purchased DeepMind years ago. So they have, if you have free tools that will tell you if it's AI generated, Google for sure knows that's AI generated. So my belief originally was going to be that they're going to A, penalize for it. B, at the very least, they could label it. I thought that's what was going to happen. They're going to label that this content was AI created. Uh, but they haven't. So the, the original stance was it's, it's uh, as long as quality content, doesn't matter how it's produced. Uh, they updated the stance a little bit in March of this year, not necessarily to change that language, but uh, to penalize content. I think their official language was they would penalize content that was created for the sake of being created, not for the sake of adding value. In other words, mass produced chat GPT content, right? Um, uh, so the, go back to the, to the original question. Um, for us, for my agency, we have a content team of over 50 people. So we produce tons and tons of content. So this question was very, very relevant for us and uh, both for our company and how we communicate to our clients about AI, right? Um, for us, our, when all this came out, the thought was, holy shit, we can now produce so much more content. Either we could give our clients more content or we could charge them less, right? That was the idea. Uh, but the, in the end, that didn't wind up happen, uh, uh, happening. So ChatGPT, instead of, instead of us using it to mass produce content, it helps us create better content. That's how I would encourage everyone else in this room to use it. Please don't use it to create generic shitty content because even if it ranks, in some ranks, we run we run A B tests, there's some automatically generated content that ranks well. But I don't think it'll rank forever. 
Um, my, my suggestion is to use it to create better content, to, uh, to be more efficient with your time, to have your content creators and editors be better at what they do and more efficient. And when I talk to other people about generative AI, how you should be using it, the oldest transition, I like to compare it to a transition from a typewriter to a computer, right? People who took the transition and switched to typing things on a computer were more efficient. Instead of using whiteout, you can press backspace, right? How much more efficient is that? Isn't that crazy? Now you don't have to retype the whole letter. So I would encourage people to use it that way and not in mass creation of content. Even if it does rank now, I think it's going to be a very temporary thing. Roman, I already have it. Um, hello, everyone. So first of all, great suggestions so far. Um, and to your question on how exactly do we use AI, uh, we did a couple of things. Amongst the most interesting ones and a practical advice to everyone here probably today uh, is that we put on paper all of our guidelines for our editors, creators, content writers, and so on. And then we started to train an AI on our documentation. So instead of actually using ChatGPT as generic as possible, basically, we trained our own AI with our own guidelines and with our own experience of about 10 years in the industry. So basically we said, okay, now give us advice on how to improve this piece of content that was already created by someone else, but based on our advice, not based on generic advice from the internet. And another way, perhaps a more practical way to use it, uh, we did something in sports betting where we basically uh, came up with these tables that help bettors make more informed decisions, right? But that was just simply statistics. So then what we said was interpret these tables, interpret the data, and narrate it in a way that is actually insightful for the user. So basically what you get is people don't really look at the table anymore, but the table of data get lost in the data. They get presented actually uh, valuable pieces of information from that data, from that table. Of course, that interpretation is not, not done by a human being, but by an AI. So there's multiple ways in which you can actually bring value. I'm very happy that everyone here said that what is the most important thing is that you actually create something of value, right? So as long as you're focused on that, I think you'll be fine and you'll avoid sort of spitting out generic, uh, generic advice, generic words, basically. Yeah. Love that answer, Roman. In, in terms of how you're actually using AI within your agency, at least in our agency, we've adopted tools that are SLPs, such as Kappa. You enter to Kappa, Kappa.sh, Kappa.ai, it's a basically a bulk generation content tool, uh, topical map AI to come up with hundreds and hundreds of topical maps in minutes. Um, are there any other tools that maybe you guys can share with the audience that you guys have included into your standard operating procedures at your companies? Uh, ahead, so uh, here in the Zoom, uh, we developed an AI uh, tool uh, that's not just for content, but also for topical relevancy which is something very important uh, in content in general, but also in everything else that's, that supports the content, such as off-page and uh, even the technical part, or in optimizing, uh, writing meta descriptions and uh, all those other small parts. Uh, so how we used it is that we uh, used, again, official Google guidelines and their own categorization of topics, and uh, we used um, machine learning, uh, processes to uh, create our own categorization tool and have uh, the most accurate categorization and uh, topical relevancy. So I don't think there is a better way to be close to Google, uh, to reaching Google rankings. And I think it's a very good and easy use of AI uh, to your own advantage and for your own power. Very good info. Um, so very good question. So I think the, the even, so take a step back, um, AI right now, even though it feels like it's been around forever, it's still like the wild, wild west, right? It's, it's like the internet was in the nineties. There's so many tools out there and so many that are starting, closing, going out of business. So there's an AI tool for almost everything. And what's interesting is that a lot of them are free. You'd be surprised how much of this stuff is out there and free. So, um, I'll mention my recommendation, uh, not a specific tool, but in general, I would encourage people to literally go and look up top AI tools because you'd be surprised how many unique tools there are to help you with what you do. Uh, for us, for our company, uh, what's been important is not even necessarily 
finding these tools and telling people to use it because again, it's changing so rapidly that that in itself is an issue. Uh, but our biggest thing has been to encourage people, all employees on every level to use and get familiar with generative AI. Um, I think just knowing what's possible has been huge and it could help and it's not just content creation, right? It's not just SEO, but it could help people with their everyday tasks that they don't realize. It literally makes people more efficient with their time at every single level. So I think aside from individual tools, which are also super important and they exist for everything, uh, I would encourage everyone who doesn't already use it or has employees that don't use it, you don't even have to, we used to buy it for all our, and we have 400 employees, right? So it's expensive for me to buy it for everyone. We would buy it for all of our employees to use because of the great value. But you don't even have to do it anymore. Uh, Microsoft Copilot uses the latest ChatGPT for free. You use Windows and you opt into the latest beta update channel. It's built into Windows. If you buy a new laptop, it's literally a key on your keyboard, right? It's so easy, but the, I think the most important thing is to actually start using it and try it out and be aware of what it can do. And the applications are crazy. I've, I've, uh, I do a lot of in the automotive space. So I was uh, speaking at a dealership recently. Um, their managers deal with a lot of complaints. Like, find, like service, dealer, uh, service manager at dealership gets a lot of complaints, right? Literally using ChatGPT to help respond to pissed off customers. I don't know. Using ChatGPT to help respond to reviews online. There's so many applications that just, again, make you more efficient. It's not going to replace what you do, but it's going to make you more efficient. So I think the most important thing is at the very least to start using it and think about how you can be using it. If I, if I can just add something, I would probably recommend you all to get some good developers and develop it yourself because you know your industry much better than any other generative AI platform can actually understand it. So I can give you a recommendation. You can use, for example, Surfer SEO, but what we could see is that the casino industry and the affiliate casino industry or the affiliate betting industries, for example, is not as effective uh, and it doesn't really understand it, the, the way things work that much, basically. So that's why we ended up actually getting some Python developers building most of the stuff in-house, to be honest. And I think that's the short piece of advice that I can give you in order to create something that is really unique and helpful to your business and to your needs. Just add to that, that, that very, very good advice. Just add that very quick to those that don't know, a lot of the generative AI models are open source and you could literally take them and install them locally. Um, there's a lot of queries that it will block because of the safety built into it to ChatGPT or uh, Microsoft Copilot, but if you run it yourself, you can literally do anything you want. And it's they're literally open source. You get a server, you install it, and you could use it internally, externally. It's all available. For you. This is slowly morphing into an AI panel. I don't know how that happened, but uh, you want to touch on AI too? All right. I want to touch base on something. I should just go way one step back. What is SEO? Right? Most people in their mind, when they hear SEO, they think about Google. And then the second thing is, you know, I want to get my website ranked number one in Google because I'm an affiliate, whatever what I'm doing. And uh, I started changing my approach to SEO significantly about a year ago where SEO, it's more a global branding approach. And what I mean by that is I, when I talk with clients, it's not just about ranking your website specifically. It's about how do I get this product or service out there, right? So globally, SEO for me, it's, yeah, your, your ranking in Google is one element for sure, but you know instead of going to the next the next the next keyword or whatever you want to rank for, like how do I rank on Bing? How do I rank in YouTube and Google Images and all of those things? Right? So now thinking about how do we use AI tools in order to better rank in Google? Well, then and it's completely different. I use ChatGPT a lot. My team uses it a lot too. Take the content and we create, recycle it so we can go from, hey, we manage to rank for X, Y, Z, Google. Then we will ask ChatGPT, could you adapt this content? Write a script for a YouTube channel. Write uh, alt tags for all the images on the website, and so on and so forth. So it is a global approach to getting a product out there on the internet, not just ranking specifically a website number one in Google. So we're recording this right now, but it's crazy how much things fluctuated in this industry and other things we were doing yesterday no longer apply today. 
Uh, maybe we'll go to Natanja and flip uh, on the topic of social media and the influence that it has on SEO. If it does have an influence, I think social media do have that kind of influence. Like once you build your niche website, affiliate site, you need to build your foundation backlinks, right? On Twitter, Facebook, like like in interest, you need to have these kind of foundation backlinks. And one thing I, I would like to add as you like, if you want to rank for competitive keywords, right? Always look at the first page. Like, what are your competitors are doing, right? What I'm seeing right now, I think old SEO is back. Exact match domain EMD. Have any like anyone have used EMD domains like to rank your site? Only Daniel, right? Like, if I want to rank for SEM Rush coupon codes, right? Example. So we we can buy SEM Rush coupons. Dot are you? Dot RU means I want to rank in Russia, example. Because I'm seeing like right now I'm ranking, I want to rank for all these kind of SaaS tool keywords right now. And what I'm seeing on the Google old SEO is back. Like EMDs are ranking very fast and, and some of the affiliates are buying dot ELD extension, like dot SH, dot RU, dot EL to rank in specific native languages. And I was shocked like this is back like in, in SEO, like in 2024, because after all these Google updates in 2024. I think old SEO is bad. Like I don't know what Google is doing. Reddit, Quora, like it's giving them all these priorities. I think like old SEO is bad. This is the kind of strategy which is working very well for me in affiliate right now in 2022 because the old strategy is still working. I'm not saying local SEO is like still unimpacted with all these updates, but affiliate SEO got a really bad hit in 2024 after all these. So, but maybe also touch on social media, maybe website architecture as well. Um, I would like to grab what Francois said. I really love how you see it as a global approach. I think this is how our company does it as well. It's not SEO for Google. For me personally, and I know my team thinks the same way, SEO is for the user. So what you need to think about is what you're selling, and what's your product, your service, and where your user is going to be, and how they're most likely to find you. So if you have a product or a service that's going to do very well on TikTok, on Facebook, or Instagram, that's where you need to be. That means that your website and all your content should be also directed for that kind of content. So it is a global approach, it's a multi-channel approach. And yes, you know, we all know that social media does run on Google as well. And if you are meant to be doing content that works best on TikTok, then doing on TikTok. If it works best on Instagram, do it there. It's still gonna show up on Google when people search for it. If that's good, if it's good content, again, it's gonna show up there. So I'm global approach. Yeah, who uses TikTok for search? Anybody use TikTok for actual search? Like I don't I no longer Google recipes. I go straight to TikTok every single time. It's way better. Quick hack, quick hack for social media. Doesn't matter what a product or service uh, you're offering, if you ever tried it, X. <clears throat> for some reason, X, everything you publish on X get referenced by Google like that. 24 hours, 48 hours. If you look at my own name on the internet, I see X pictures coming up anywhere in the world, and I think I made like 10 posts in my life. So we started doing it for all the service and products that we're promoting. We just throw stuff on X, doesn't matter if we have any following, it does. Get just X, there. not triple X. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. no, not triple X. Oh, okay. That's a better <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Mara, did you want to touch on that? Um, in terms of website architecture having an impact on SEO. Uh, definitely, uh, one of the most important things uh, about the user experience as you already covered is uh, how they can navigate, how fast they can get to what they uh, came for in the website. And this is especially important for the affiliate websites, uh, which are getting hit more and more by the core updates. Uh, because of their bad practices, or um, they maybe don't know enough, maybe they don't know that their website is uh, loading slow, uh, the customers are bouncing off uh, from the website, so uh, it's important to track your um, the behavior of the users on your website to uh, kind of get uh, an overall view uh, how they see your website, how they feel. Uh, feel is a very strange uh, word in uh, AI era but we should get back to this and um, think of how the user is uh, seeing your website and how it is structured. Ro so Roman, uh, you want to hit that one too Alex? Do you have something to say on that? I could chime in just very quick. Um, I think we covered, we covered almost all of it. Just, just to highlight a couple of things. Um, 
for sure. Social media and NSEO, right? Social media, I think the contribution is it is and will continue to be within search, Google search or whatever it is, like you just touched upon uh, X, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll call it Twitter, I'm not confuse the audience. Uh, <laughs> Twitter has a, uh, Google has a feed to Twitter uh, that they, they pull the data instantly. So literally contributing on Twitter will pull into Google. You have images, you have video, everything else. The only misconception I just want to clear up, and I think we're all on the same page here, but a very popular question I get asked from small businesses is having a social media profile helping me rank my site, rank higher, and that is usually not the case, right? But I have people come to me, I have 100,000 followers on Instagram, why doesn't my site rank higher? So. As long as we understand that getting more followers on Instagram will not help your domain rank higher, I think uh, uh, obviously social media does 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 help in, in the ways that we just touched upon. How how important is a signal of having uh, a LinkedIn profile, you know, giving you that authority, the A piece of the beat, and and not having an impact? On you know, I, I'll very really quickly answer since I still hold, holding the microphone. I'll pass it off. Uh, what's interesting is it's uh, it helps, but not a ton. What, what helped the most is when Google had their own social media platform, for the Google Plus. Google Plus. So that that actually helped yeah. most. That was the most out of all the social media networks that actually helped your rankings the most. Well, I mean, Google Business Profile obviously for local businesses. I don't think anybody do local business SEO here. Oh, we do have a couple. Oh, sweet. Okay, nice. Yeah, obviously that's important to post them there on a regular basis. Is there a, a best practice for how many times you're posting? Now, you do a lot of local business friends. So it's funny because uh, what we find is GMB, if you had, if you would spend a lot of time optimizing your GMB and really focus on it a few years ago, you could rank really high, it would help a lot, you would get a huge benefit from it. And now, like what I see is your website helps a lot your GMB at a local level. The GMB doesn't help that much anymore. Your website. Mm -hmm. There are other things, other golden nuggets that can be focused on, and I can understand for everybody it gets a little bit confusing. Like for me, if I ask anybody, like, what is Google planning? Like, where is this game going in the next twelve months? Hard to tell. They say, hey, have a perfect, healthy backlink profile, and you know, it's something that we do that we didn't use in the past. We always save a, a little bit of money for testing. We're systematically testing stuff, doesn't matter what Google tells us to do or not. And again, no later than two weeks ago, working on one of the projects, um, the, uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> just, uh, just, yeah, you know, what, yeah, so, I, yeah I, I know where I'm going. So, working on a, on a project two weeks ago, um, did I get up this stage? Yeah, we're, you know what, we're going down this rabbit hole of local SEO, which about four people put their hands up. So <laughs> let's, let's go on, let's go on. What I want to talk about next on this topic, yeah, yeah, right. So what I want to talk about next is the importance of having a holistic approach to your SEO, having a PPC program running, having social media paid. How much of an impact does that have or contribute to your SEO program? So go to you, Roman, on that one. I think it's important to understand the complete funnel and where the customer touches your brand, so the touch points of the customer with the brand itself, right? And to be honest, in any organic interaction, this doesn't just happen with people going on Google, Googling something and converting. That's almost never happens, okay? So it's important, I think, to, to have a very sort of multi-channel approach if you're serious about your brand. And SEO is part of it, and they all sort of contribute and encourage each other, right? So I think um, one example, one of the best examples, I think, is brand and how brand actually supports SEO so well. If you're Amazon, you can uh, publish a URL tomorrow about yellow umbrellas or something. There can be a thousand websites about yellow umbrellas out there. You'll still outrank everyone else. Okay? And the same exact uh, example can be used for any other place where a brand plays a particularly important role in what you're doing in SEO as well. Because simply people simply understand, recognize a brand and click on it and that interaction itself time and time and time again contribute to ultimately higher rankings basically. So this is just a tiny part of how important it is to think holistically and to think perhaps brand first rather than SEO first or organic first basically when we think about this. 
it, interesting that point. I, I'm sorry, I'll, I keep coming back to automotive because I, I live a lot in that world and I speak a lot in that world. Uh, a recent study that was done that there's now 900 digital touch points for someone that buys a car before they buy it. 900 digital touch points across every single media. So you're just thinking about buying a car, right? You gotta do a general search. You're gonna go to a manufacturer website. You're gonna look up videos on YouTube. Then you're gonna look at social media. Then you're gonna find a specific dealership. Then you gotta compare trim levels. 900 touch points someone has before they purchase a vehicle. Fine, if someone's buying some the cheaper item, it won't be 900, right? But the, the, the amount of digital touch points that exist now are much higher than ever before. And it spans devices, it spans uh, literally everything you could imagine. So for sure, everything you do has to be holistic. It has to be consistent. Um, it's a uh, multi-channel I've been hearing forever and why multi-channel is important. But what I, what, I, what I see is the big difference between companies that are very successful in their marketing versus those that aren't is you have to be consistent with everything you do. Like even color schemes, you can't do like a, I don't know, uh, your your Facebook ad is one color scheme and they land on your landing page and it's a different color scheme, right? Or you're using certain messaging in your paper, uh, Google pay click but not in your Facebook, it's completely different. So it's uh, for sure organic is a small part of a very, very big picture. And um, for those that aren't just doing organic and are thinking big picture, the amount of touch points are ever growing and you always have to keep that in mind. Tamara, did you want to touch on that? Yes, it's, uh, it's a very interesting line of uh, thoughts here. Uh, we heard words like multi-channel, automation, holistic, uh, SEO, PPC, which is a lot for just a few minutes uh, because they are very different. Uh, but let's, let's explain it in a more uh, simple way. Um, I'd like to use uh, PPC uh, data for SEO. Uh, so combining uh, paid and organic, uh, what we as SEOs and uh, maybe affiliate uh, owners, uh, website owners can use from the paid marketing is not only the fast value that you can get, but also the information about the user. Uh, the granular information that you can get about their behavior on your website, about the clicks and how they interact with certain keywords or uh, searches that uh, you can use to improve your SEO and maybe get some better results for less investment, which is something that is uh, interesting to everyone, I think. Uh, you invest less, but get more. Um, and uh, what's good with holistic and SEO approach is that the results are long-term, so we can use the past stuff to get something that lasts longer. As a normal company, I do love a uh, holistic approach. But if we are specific to affiliates, which is, uh, we have quite an experience on it, and the majority of our clients are affiliates, usually they want results fast. The affiliates come and go, and if you really want to be for a long term, um, you have a lot of competition and you need a bit of budget. So the first thing we ask all our clients is what do you want? Do you want to be, have results now, the next month, or do you want to be on the long run? We always recommend PPC. So whether you're new or you've been for a long time, you do need to do advertising. SEO will get you results on the long term. So for affiliates, you need to be doing advertising. You have to be doing PPC. You have to do more affiliate deals. You have to do all of that while doing SEO. So yes, it's all very beautiful when you're a normal uh, company, but you, when you're in this niche, um, you really need to focus on what's your goal and what's your budget. If you do not have a lot of budget for PPC, most likely you might have to wait a little bit more, invest more in SEO, um, and you cannot do the full holistic approach. We've, uh, we've been talking a very high, those great points, talk very high level SEO. It's really tough to, like, we could sit here and probably do five, six different panels on some of those things we're talking about, right? So it's very high level. So I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to, to have the mic because I'm sure you guys work in very specific niches that you have a very specific question for the panel up here. Please raise your hand and we'll get a mic uh, your way. Hi, everyone. I don't have a very specific question. Uh, just a general one uh, about the SEO in affiliate space. So do you think, is there a future for affiliates in the SEO? Because uh, it's changing a lot, right? 
And uh, especially with the generation, generation Z, they don't read, like I don't read when I buy, right? So it doesn't affect my customer behavior. So, um, yeah. I love that question. I, I ask that question on every podcast with an SEO. I'd love to get your guys' take on that. The, future, the crystal ball of SEO, what do you see? He's gonna have to fight for it. <laughs> it's okay. So I can share some insight. Like I'm, I know like update SEO is getting a bit complicated in 2024. After this March update, core update, yes, like our revenues also got dropped. And I say, okay, what's working right now? I do, I'm talking about Parasite SEO, and I'm going to say it again. Like Parasite SEO is working. So like LinkedIn Pulse, I told you. Like if I'm not able to rank very fast for my affiliate keywords for my own main, main niche website. I will use all these high authority sites like Medium, LinkedIn, and you can buy all these LinkedIn Medium accounts, like aged accounts, from sites like Use Viral. Okay, somebody have used it, Use Viral, because aged accounts, like from for Facebook or LinkedIn, it works very well. It has some kind of authority. If you create a new LinkedIn profile and you start talking about how to make money online with affiliate marketing, and you start promoting some kind of affiliate products there, like doing reviews and coupons. Your account will get banned. We, we tried it out, so buy aged accounts, like like spend some money on these aged accounts, and it's working very well in affiliate space. Because all the as experts I know, they are just doing their things. Because the Black Friday is coming up in October, November, I think. So everybody is buying all these LinkedIn profiles, medium accounts, Reddit, Quora, like aged ones, and they just started like like putting content out there. That's where you can easily make up like fast money. Then, like we are making that fast money, and we are investing into PPC. That's what we are doing there. Very good one. Uh, so another way uh, that we like to implement in uh, our strategies at Zoom is that we do um, more user experience uh, type of content for affiliates. Because uh, as far as we saw in the last few years, uh, the best spammy tactics are. Uh, being cleaned, cleansed out by Google algorithms, so affiliates cannot rely on this anymore. They can lose a lot of money by doing this. Uh, they invested a lot in their website or uh, structure platform, and uh, they lose it because of ten bad backlinks or content that's not very good for their website. So um, in this case, um, it's I think the future of SEO. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the future would be in the user reviews of a specific niche of affiliates. Um, this way we will attract more real users and uh, it may be harder uh, to uh, go to the top um, and filter out all of the other spam, but uh, focusing on the user rather than just getting uh, redirects and uh, multiple uh, levels of, of linking, uh, I don't think it's working anymore from top page side. So a, a couple of quick things. Um, I don't think I don't think SEO is dead for affiliate. I think uh, certain categories are going to become more difficult, thus thus, thus less profitable. Um, if you search around, there's actually a list of which industries uh, the search generative experience comes up more often. So if you want to lower your risks, don't create SEO content for those industries, but Having said that, uh, the new search generative experience update now sources content. So even though there's an AI result, it will source your website and that's where it's pulling the content. So you can still get traffic that way. Um, I think being at the top of Google is going to be a lot more important than it has before, which means you have to invest more. But then again, I think you'll get more. I think where before you could get away with being number eight, number nine organically, now you can because you have the search generative response and you have paid ads and uh, I think now you have to be top three, right? So if you have the money to invest in it and you're doing it in an industry category, let's call it, that's not as squeezed, I think there's still opportunities. For sure, it's been not a good year and a half for affiliates doing SEO or perhaps previously invest a lot of money in SEO, but I think there's always opportunities. Just to answer your question quite simply, there definitely is a future. Uh, it's just that the prerequisites for ranking have changed considerably. I think people still fail to understand that very well. Um, the, the main reason, this is a personal view, but the main reason why a lot of affiliates suffered is to be honest, because they were offering shitty services. 
uh, okay? So it's not enough to create a page full of content, but that, by the way, is not going to be read by anyone. You just do SEO content. That's how it's even called. Uh, put your top table at the top with, with, if you're affiliate with all of the operators in hope that you're going to get that click. You're actually interested in the click rather than being interested in what the user actually gets from your website. So what we see now, and, and we just need to understand it, is that who's left in the affiliate industry and who ranks usually deserves to be there. If I look at the casino industry, no matter how many websites I had or, or I was working on, the ones that I knew were high value were the, are still there. And the, my competitors that I knew were bringing a lot of value to the user are still there. So there's definitely a future in, in affiliate SEO, but we need to be really true to ourselves and understand what is exactly value in the current context. And not just sort of spit out content and do affiliate links. That's not going to work. Very, very good point. I, was, I didn't even think of that, but what comes to mind as you were talking is, and I don't do as much in the affiliate world as you guys, but for me, as you were talking, if you search, for example, like credit card comparisons, like you're looking to get a credit card, right? The content that comes up, all those sites, it's not Chase coming up. Chase will pay, pay for the click, or organically Chase or Bank of America, whatever, it's not gonna come up. It's all these third party, like third wallet, like they're, they're affiliate websites, right? They're affiliate websites, but if you think about it, they're creating so much value. They're not just creating like like crap content. They've been creating value for a long time. That's why they continue to rank. That's why they continue to make money. And it's diversifying your content strategy in a lot of cases too. Building content not just for Google, but building it for Bing, building it for ChatGPT. Like where are people searching now? Where are people going to be searching six months from now? Building content for those platforms. Any other questions? We have well, we have a few back here. All right. So my question is about the quality of search in Google search in 2024. So Google moved from EAT to EAT. Uh, Google has done many other things, changes, frequent uh, core, not, and not core algorithm updates, ranking for already LinkedIn uh, higher than it used to be before. So uh, the question is, what is how would you what, what's your opinion about the quality of Google search for the end user today after so many changes compared to let's say five years ago or ten years ago? Did Google search become better for the end user? Let's tackle that. I'll, I'll go quick and then I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off. Um, I think it's I can't. Is, is it better or worse? Uh, what comes to mind is the is the memes of uh, people searching like uh, I don't know if you've seen these, but people searching uh, how do you make a cheese pizza and Google says uh, Google AI check Google's generative AI says to put glue in your pizza like says things like that or like how, how do you improve your iron? It says like eat more rocks, right? Uh, so in, the, in that sense, I think the, the experience is still a uh, work in progress. Uh, I think generally Google has always been working on the user experience and to provide better results, right? Uh, I think right now we're in a very weird period with the AI stuff and a lot of stuff going on where I as a user feel like I'm getting worse results. Um, for the first time ever, I've been getting such bad results for some searches that I actually go to different search engines, which is, is weird to me because I've, I've become so Google-centric and so many people have become Google-centric. No, but I think it's a just transition period, and I think they're rolling out a lot of things because they have to. They can't wait and be falling fall behind. Right for the first time in the history of Google, for the first time since the internet went from a directory to a search engine, Google has an existential threat. Right where before you want a recipe for apple pie, you would go on Google apple pie recipe and you would look through all the spammy affiliate sites. Um, now you can go to ChatGPT and ask uh, and tell Chat uh, ask ChatGPT to give you the steps step by step and read them off to you, right? So uh, existential threat for Google. Uh, what can I say? Sergey Brin is back. He was I don't know if you guys know, but he he was he was like on an island. He was like he was out. He he was uh, on a permanent vacation. He's back now. Uh, there's a lot of changes going on. Organic paid a lot of changes that to me don't seem good, but I think in the, the end result is for sure always user experience. So even though it seems like the user experience isn't great now, and I think that's creating opportunities for 
not only other search engines, but other ways for people to find information. So definitely have to keep an eye on other platforms and other things, because I think for the first time ever, there's opportunity to displace how we search for information online. So I would keep an eye on that, but I think, I think it will get better. I think Google will stop recommending that you eat rocks and silly things like that. I'll try to be very simple on this, but the only goal of Google, besides making money, is to give you the best results. The reason why everyone, most people use Google, is because you know you're going to find the right uh, answer to your question, to whatever you're looking for. So every current day, people ask this all the time. I give talks about this so many times, which is, oh, what's going to happen with the next Google core update? What does this impact me? At the end of the day, I think it's pretty much what we said the whole panel is you need to create quality content because Google will reward whatever gives the best result, whatever gives the best search. So every core update and every update goes towards that code. So removing, um, when we were talking about AI generated content, so it removes all the bad AI generated content because unfortunately there is a lot, people don't know how to use it properly. But yes, every core update, it is to give you a best result. And I think that will go that way. Um, for the next year so far, yeah. Maybe we have time for one more question. Because you're gonna have to rock paper scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rapid fire. So, so the thing is that I, I like to pick up your brains and I like to see which are your top one or two or three tips that you can give to SEO so they can implement it and see results as fast as possible. In one sentence. Each person, one sentence. <laughs> give a test. Maybe take away. say something about this uh, negative SEO. For you and what? Is that negative SEO? Yeah. Uh, Negative SEO, your thoughts on negative SEO. Yes. And, and tips. So maybe we incorporate the two. Let's go down the list here. One final tip and uh, your input on negative <laughs> SEO. Okay, we'll start right here. So, like for the, like the bad SEO, I would say, like, like, trash out the bad content from your site. Like, if you feel like this is a trashy piece of content, so trash out all the bad content. That's what we did it because in March 2024, my, one of my sites got hit very badly. I lost 80% of the traffic. And over the period of six months, what I was doing, trashing out the bad content, fixing the content, like which was giving me traffic in 2023. So I saw like, what are the loopholes in these content? Like, should we trash them? Should we update them? So we, we weed out all those bad content from the site. And this has really helped us a lot. And in this latest update by Google, we saw traffic boost of almost like 20% on those sites, which got hit by 80, 90% traffic. I would say identify what's your best pages, see what kind of content you have there and try to reproduce it. Um, and also on the other side, identify what's not working, which content pieces have no use, no engagement, and then try to recycle those and see what the competitors are doing to make something better. Uh, first one, um, always think of your user from that perspective and uh, use automation to save time uh, for smaller tasks. Uh, on negative SEO, I don't think it's that easy anymore um, to just uh, kill off someone's domain with uh, traffic bot and traffic spam because uh, we cannot rank uh, that fast. We can also cannot de-rank that fast, so. All right, uh, quick, quick tip, I, I think uh, the most, at general level, uh, I think the most important thing I could recommend for anyone doing SEO is to be very agile, um, more so now than ever before. I think in the last year, we saw more change in, in SEO than the 10 years before, right? There was, even though it was changing, it wasn't changing rapidly, you could have kept doing the same strategy and still been successful. Uh, I think being agile is going to be super, super important in the next 12 months as things will continue to change rapidly. Um, for negative SEO, I agree it's not as prominent now. Um, there's definitely ways to combat it. And from my understanding, Google in the upcoming releases uh, is going to make it even more difficult to do negative SEO. And they're aware of the implications of negative SEO. The SEO advice would be to build a brand. It's not really SEO advice, it's just building. Just build a brand. 
There's a recruitment advice as well. Don't work with like shady agencies. Be careful who we work with. Uh, unfortunately, the SEO, there's no university for SEO, okay? So you just learn and you do it. Uh, there are senior specialists out there, they're great people, but there's also a big chunk of the industry that is not as reputable. So you really have to take care of that basically. And uh, don't worry about, don't worry about negative SEO too much. Um, Google will either pick up on that basically, or uh, just make sure that you have the necessary means to avoid it. They block the traffic, for example, that is giving you headaches. And it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's never affected us that much. So I don't worry about it too much. Awesome. I hope you guys got a ton of value out of the SEO um, panel here today. Um, I did, for sure. You guys are brilliant. That was awesome. Coming up in five minutes, we have the iGaming Influencer Traffic Case Study, Transforming Content Creators into Successful iGaming Affiliates. Don't go away, but let's give a round of applause for our panelists here on that Thank you, guys.